about 15 years ago I was working for the group that actually had taken the license for this original technology, how to make a, a vibrational soundboard into a loudspeaker and was working as part of the team in those very first products that were actually released using this technology. Now those first products, as you would in any technology, were fairly crude and fairly basic. But it actually taught us a few things. One was that the technology really does work. It really is able to fill a room with some fantastic sound. And a lot of people weren't really close enough to the technology to realise that. The second thing was we knew how to build a really good product as well and it would be possible. And Basically, we started Amina now 14 years ago, taking those ideas and just wanted to focus on this technology. We wanted to build the best invisible loudspeaker or low discrete, if you like, discrete loudspeaker. And we built products that were pictures on walls, we built products that were ceiling tiles, we built products that were projection screens. And we were listening to customers the entire time. And one of those customers in within the first two years of our uh, be in, in being as a company, one of those customers was a, uh, an architect in Germany. He was doing a bank building. And he realised he could take our very thin, 35 millimeter deep, flat loudspeakers, set it into the wall, paint it the same colour as the wall, but you would always have a shadow line, a gap around the edge. And so uh, we said, OK, well, Let's, let's try something. We think we can design you a product that's actually going to get plastered in. You won't have a shadow line at all. We came to an arrangement that we would design something, he would put it in the wall. If it worked, he would pay us. If it didn't work, just leave it there. We wouldn't worry about it. Anyway, the product was uh, developed within about four weeks. We sent it across to them. They put it in the wall. The uh, tradesmen on site all were pretty wowed by this thing, having seen it uh, in actual operation. And there was a very, there was an interesting tale there, because one evening before the end of the project, somebody broke in to actually try and break it out of the wall, the very first invisible loudspeaker. Now he was disturbed, that got refinished, that customer was incredibly happy with the result, and that product is still working to this very day. And ever since then, as a company, we focused entirely on this product line, making visual products, making them better than ever before. Today we spend more than ever on our R&D programme, taking this to new levels that mean uh, customers can have uh, an ultra-reliable, long-term solution of sound in their homes without seeing it, without interfering with their interior design. How come the violinist is holding the violin very close to the ear, yet isn't deafened, and yet we hear it in the back of the concert hall. What's happening in that circumstance? And it's because the vibrational soundboard is much better at connecting with air and putting sound into it. So firstly, what's happening is the vibrational device is sending energy in all directions, not just forwards as we imagine from a conventional pistonic device. That means that energy hits the first reflective surfaces of the concert hall itself. Now that energy, like the surface of the musical instrument itself, is very complex. And some of that energy gets reflected in from the boundary. It's just more complex energy, and that's effectively additive. That adds in a bit more, hits another surface, goes back a bit more, another surface, etc. So at the back of the concert hall, all we're listening to, or principally we're listening to reflected sound from the surfaces, not the violin directly. And that's not true of a conventional loudspeaker. We'd actually be wanting to listen to the loudspeaker directly in that circumstance. And so the violinist, therefore, isn't actually playing this thing much louder than we're actually listening to it at the concert hall, a very much shallower gradient. Now, 20 years ago, there's a eureka moment where somebody discovered the idea of, well, why don't we make a loudspeaker from a vibrational soundboard, not from a piston? And that, uh, we took that technology, we basically said, OK, instead of using a, uh, a piece of wood held stiffly because of its shape, which is what's happening in a violin, we now use modern composite structures. These are aluminium uh, uh, honeycomb structures, uh, and they're super lightweight but super stiff. We then drive that vibrational surface, not with a string, but with an effectively an electronic tuning fork. And that moves tiny amounts, but 
itself is exciting the vibrations on that surface. We then put that into the wall, skim over it with a two millimeter skim of plaster, normal plaster, that becomes the soundboard of the instrument itself. Uh, and then that, when that plays, of course, will fill the entire room with sound. In fact, much better than that conventional loudspeaker, we can get a lot away in bigger spaces like restaurants, uh, an open plan, uh, homes, etc., with a lot less loudspeakers. In fact, perhaps we can use four times less number of loudspeakers. That's a lot less installation time as well.